Hey guys, Rhonda Draculas here, RK3 Designs, and we're gonna do something really fun. The world's kind of crazy right now, and we decided to play into this craziness, and we're gonna do a finish that involves a really large cat and a really crazy dude. It's gonna be almost like our peacock granite because we're gonna use acrylics and we're gonna use a couple of the regular dyes and then we're gonna use some mica powders. So a list of all of our supplies that we're gonna be using, you can just click the link above me and get a whole list of this plus some uh, additional pictures. So let's get started. I've poured out my epoxy and you can see here I've pretty much got the same amount of epoxy. I'm not really worried that every color is gonna be exactly the same. I'm not gonna use as much gold, so I don't have quite as much gold in there because I'm not really going for a really high metallic finish on this. So I'm gonna start adding my colors. With an acrylic in epoxy, you have to be very careful. I know a lot of times you hear people, oh, you can't use acrylic in epoxy. You can, but there is a fine line. And if you cross that fine line, you're gonna get silly strain. This is how little of acrylic paint that I'm gonna use in this much of epoxy. Now, this is a very, very good brand of acrylic. It's pretty thick. So the thicker, the brand, the thicker it stays on your stick, the less you're gonna use. So if you go and buy a little less expensive, maybe the ones in the little uh, the little squeeze bottles that are real runny, you're gonna have to use a little bit more of that and that's gonna actually affect your outcome. So you really wanna kinda use an acrylic that's a little on the higher end of the scope. So this is my orange. In the epoxy, it almost gives it more of a stiffness. It, um, so your, your pattern doesn't move quite as much. I really like playing with the acrylics. Plus you get some really wild colors. I'm going for an opaque color. This is vermilion. All right, so we're gonna go into our yellow. You can really see the vivid colors that you get. I really like that. Now, if I were to put too much of this, when I did this, it would be almost like a silly string. That's what we wanna stay away from. And you notice I'm using the same stick. That's okay, kind of wiping it off. All right, so I'm gonna do some gold. This is a metallic gold. Even though it's still a, an acrylic, it's got a little bit of a sheen to it. All right. And then now we're gonna come in with red mica powder. And this is from Stone Coat Countertops. Again, even though it's a mica powder, I don't wanna use a ton. Probably this much in this much of epoxy. It's gonna be very, very opaque. Now with your mica powders, when you stir them into epoxy, you really need to stir them good. If you don't, you'll get these little tadpole fishtail little marks once you pour it. It's almost like cake batter. When you stir cake batter and then ever so often you'll hit like a little dry spot, that's what happens with your mica powder if you don't mix it really, really well. Okay, then we're gonna come in for my base tint. I don't want it super just jet black. I want a little bit of warmth in my base tint and I'm gonna mix the Alumalite black opaque dye with the Alumalite brown opaque. Tiny bit of this goes a long way. There we go. Okay, so I literally put one drop. This little bottle will do over two gallons. So you can see how concentrated it is. But I'm now I'm gonna come in with my dark brown just to add a little bit of warmth. And you can see literally how little I put in there. Wow, yeah. Adding just a little bit of that brown. I think I'm gonna add a little bit more actually. I want it to be really a pretty warm color. I'm gonna pre-lube my board. And the reason I'm gonna do this, 
I want this finish. I want the epoxy in the, the acrylic that I have just made all my colors. I want them to flow and I want them to have something slick to kind of flow on. So I'm gonna start off with the base tint and it's not really a lot. I'm gonna heat it up just a little bit just so I can smooth it out. You can take your stick. And like I said, I'm not looking for beautiful 100% coverage. You can see I'm not too worried. I'm gonna grab my edges a little bit. Okay, so now we're gonna start laying our color down. I have it in my brain how I kind of want this to lay out. Still haven't told you what we're doing, but this is gonna give it away. All right, so we're gonna start laying down some colors. Now, what I do like about the acrylic in the epoxy is that it tends to stay where I put it a little easier or a little better, I should say, than just regular epoxy. I, I like how um, it doesn't move a whole lot. All right, so come in with our yellow. And I know it looks like I'm really strategically placing this. I'm really not. I just want it to be more in stripes. Now, can you see how I'm getting a little more stringy? Can y'all see that? How it's a little more stringy? That's what you're gonna get when you put acrylic in epoxy. So you don't, your open time is not gonna be as fast. So now we're coming in with a vermilion. The yellow is looking a little green on top of this black. All right. Now I like having that little string because it kind of gives me a little bit more firmness to work with. Now this is the mica powder. This is not an acrylic, so it's still pretty fluid. Now I'm kind of just trying to go in between, cover any of the black that I still see. Here comes the gold. Now the gold I want to be very light. I don't want that gold to take over. All right, so I have a pattern laid down. Let's see what happens. Take my finger. I do want them to meld. I don't want them to totally mix. All right. Torch it just a little bit. I'm gonna tilt it a little. Just get a little bit of movement there. I'm gonna heat it up. I really want the middle to move because I want it to be like a V as I tilt. So I'm only heating up the middle. See how it's just making the middle move and not the outside? That's what I'm looking for. Okay, are you ready? We're gonna do the next step, which is gonna take this mess right here to look like a granite. All right, black spray paint. I'm gonna come, and I want it to be very fractured, which means I really want the black to play a part in this finish. So I'm gonna do a pretty heavy fog. If you don't want the black, and you'll see what I'm talking about in just a second. If you don't want that to be as bold as what I'm doing, then just lightly fog, fog, don't use as much black spray paint. But I want it to be very, very uh, uh, fractured. Huh. 
100% covered. Now I'm gonna come back with some plain isopropyl alcohol. And I'm gonna start fracturing. I'm gonna let this sit. You, you have to let the alcohol do its job. If you put too much alcohol, you'll have your pattern completely run off the board. So take a step back, let it do its thing. I'm gonna give it about 10 minutes. I'm gonna reevaluate and we'll go from there. Okay, so I really like how my big spots are coming out. Now I wanna hit it with a fine mist alcohol and kind of open up the darker areas. So I'm gonna come up, very finely hit it. Now we're gonna get a little smaller fractures. If you see any parts that are really dark and you wanna open them up, that's when you come back with your hand and you put bigger, bigger spots. And again, I'm really not putting that much. I'm barely squeezing and I'm, I'm not putting a lot of alcohol on here. All right, this is looking pretty cool. Looking pretty tigery. Looking pretty crazy. You put it all together. We got crazy tiger granite. We literally at the last second decided to throw this together. So let me give you guys some hint of what I wouldn't do if I did it again. I probably wouldn't use the red mica powder. The red mica powder kind of overpowered some of my acrylics that I used. My yellow, I think because I added brown to my base tint, the yellow is turning a green color. So I probably would either use just a straight black or I would make my yellow just a little more opaque or what you could do is not even do a black base tint, do a clear base tint. Then when you lube your board, it's just clear. You're not introducing another color for those acrylic colors to set on top of. So if I had to do it again, I probably would have used a clear base, but I really like this. This is really turning out fun. This was just a fun finish to do. You could do this on maybe a serving tray or a kid's uh, countertop or a piece of furniture. Um, it's just a really fun way to get creative. of us are stuck in the house right now and we're looking for fun things to do and this is a fun thing to do so if you like this video give me a thumbs up hit the bell for future notifications subscribe to our channel and visit our website if you want any of the materials on this you can go to our website click on the resource tab and all of our supplies will be listed there leave me some comments I love hearing what you guys have to say and also I want you guys to stay safe out there Let's all keep our spirits high. Let's all really support each other. And we will all make it through this. Don't be scared. Move forward and be creative.